V's. It's really hard to say. So it's Vroom Vroom Veer, not Broom Broom Beer, which would have been yep. better probably. But okay, so whenever you're ready, go ahead and shoot it. Howdy, folks. This is Johnny Crowder, the founder and CEO of Cope Notes, and you are listening to Jeff Smith on Vroom Vroom Veer. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Johnny. That was awesome. I'm going to hit stop. I'll be right back. Nice. Are you ready to thoughtfully steer away from your revved up, frenzied, and far too often scripted life? Then welcome to Vroom Vroom Veer with Jeff Smith, where he guides you down the road differently traveled by sharing unique experiences with guests who have managed to shift away from a life stuck on cruise control and veered their way into a more authentic and fulfilling one in all sorts of interesting and kind of remarkable ways. Get ready to Vroom Vroom Veer with your differently traveled road chauffeur, Jeff Smith. Ken Cladoris, thank you so much for being on Vroom Vroom Veer and welcome to the show. How's it going? I'm doing great, Jeff. How are you? Uh, I'm doing great. Uh, I got up this morning and I wasn't hung over. Boo-hoo! <laughs> That's a great way to start the day. <laughs> Not hung over, right. It's really hard for me to get to the end of the work week with a job and not want to just, you know, kick back. You know, but I, I feel like a lot of people myself. have that same thing. I, I stopped myself at beer number three. So good on me. Um, nice. Anyway. OK, so you are at uh, Ken dot com. Um, talk a little bit about what you're most excited about in your business today. Yeah, so we are launching uh, one on one coaching, which is kind of the next iteration for the company. So that's really exciting for me. Awesome. One on one yeah. coaching. Nice. And that is that. Sort of like coaching for the stillness stuff or, or the businessy stuff? Well, I think they're the same. So it's uh, <laughs> Good answer. Same thing. <laughs> it's the stillness stuff so you can be better in business, have a better life. Oh, yeah. So, that's true. Yeah. yeah. You know, stillness is sort of like foundational, isn't it? It's sort of like a spiritual eating. <laughs> exactly. And if you don't have a foundation, you really can't build anything. Right. So. Right. You got to start somewhere. We got to start at the foundation and yes. work our way up. Yeah. All right. So, okay. So that was, that's your business. That's you. That's KenCladoris.com. So this is going to be fun because we're going to, later on, we're going to talk about this famous Cayman Island trip, which I guess is, I haven't heard the story yet, but I, apparently it's one of your big veers. So that's cool. That's coming up down the road. And then later on, we're also going to talk about a story called, Oops, I'm Rock Climbing. And I'm not prepared for that anyway. So that sounds like a fun story. But before all of that, this is Vroom Vroom Veer. So we have to go back in time and talk about what you were like in childhood. And we'll start with, where did you grow up? Yeah, so... I grew up in Southern California. SoCal guy. All right. Yeah. It's very random to live in Southern California and still be, you know, still be here. Still living in California. Still yeah. living in SoCal. Okay. So wh what what part of SoCal did you grow up in? Um, like North Orange County. So okay. Anaheim Hills. Yeah. Oh, nice. All right. Yeah. And what was childhood like? Were you like living on the beach like all the time? One of those little blonde kids that surfed all the time? <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, no. <laughs> okay <laughs> good that's a good answer right um yes <laughs> no i would I'm say done. my childhood was <laughs> go ahead oh man my, my childhood was uh was a roller coaster oh in that um you know a lot of ups and downs i think just like in life in general right um so you know you never really knew what today was going to bring or anything um so it was a little difficult but you know, we made the best of it. Interesting. So were you a beach kid at all? or Because uh, I know at some point you fall in love with the ocean and boating and sailing and things like that. So were you anywhere near the water? Mm, we're like 45 minutes away from the water. Okay. Um, so not really. The, <laughs> no. <laughs> not like really. I'm, not bike, I'm not riding my bicycle there. Right, right. Gotcha. Um, okay. Maybe with an e-bike now, but, you know, there wasn't e-bikes back then. No, um, no, right, right. But yeah, no, so no ocean, but I was always and have always been like a water person. Okay, gotcha. Um, so lakes, things like that, always, all the time. Nice. Okay. So, all right. So you're a kid, 
it's it's ups and downs, not really boating yet. So what was high school like for you? Yeah, a lot of the same. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, gotcha. No, I mean, so high school, I was one of those students that, you know, did enough to get by. That sounds like me. Yeah, yes. right. You're like, okay, I can do this. You know, in some classes I would apply myself and others I wouldn't. And, you know, right. just more of having a lot of fun, enjoying high school. Okay. Um, but at that point, I did have a small, like, powerboat. For really? Already? Wow. Okay. It, Good it's a you. short, long story. <clears throat> Please, um, do the long version of the short, long story. Uh, yeah, so basically my uncle had that boat as I was growing up, wanted to sell it. I was like, you can't sell the boat. Like, I grew up on that boat. Yeah. Um, so we just worked out a deal for me to uh, make payments to him over a period of time and take it over. Oh, wow. Okay. So, yeah. It's and a very small boat. Was this a, a, a lake kind of boat or an ocean going boat? Lake boat. It was very small. Very tiny little lake boat. Okay. Yep. See, but I, it was uh it was fun to be, you know. You're you the know. captain of the ship right there. Exactly. And then it gave <laughs> me like my little escape. Yeah. And I had a lot of fun and yeah. really just solidified my your love you for know. the ocean kind of thing. Yeah, and for the all, water. And, that yeah. all happened in high school. Okay. Yep. So like when I was a kid, I mean, I remember one of my dad's friends that we camped with all the time. He had like a ski boat, you know, like a motorboat you can take out on a lake and then the kids can ski behind it. Yep. My story is, is I was never able to get up on skis. I, I, I don't think I tried hard enough though. To be I was going to say, did you give it a lot of effort? No. <laughs> no. So you, what you mean is you didn't want to learn how to skate. I guess. I, you know, I, I gave it, uh, you know, maybe, I don't know if I can't really remember. I wasn't really all that motivated to try to be, to, to be honest with you. But I mean, I remember they kept saying, keep your butt down, push your legs up, keep your butt down, keep your legs up. I think they got tired of trying. <laughs> <laughs> like there's I, not enough beer on this boat for us to keep doing this. Exactly. We gotta get yes. Yes. Forget this. You know, I, you know the kids that actually want to ski are still waiting for you to get your shit together. So, yeah, <laughs> I did try it and failed and then quit. So anyway, um, I, the other I, I have another thing. We uh, I don't know how old I was. I must have been in high school at probably, I suppose. Could have been middle school. I don't remember, but I remember we went out on a uh, a canoe in a lake and we were fishing. Uh, and at we were like, so there was like this campground, right? And then you take the um, the canoe, you go under this culvert, and now you're on in a whole other lake far away from where the campground is, right? <laughs> so we were far away and fucking around and you know fishing and getting sunburn. And everything's wonderful, right? And then this storm rolls in, and the wind is just pushing us away, right? <laughs> so we're like, oh, shit. Now we're on the water. There's lightning. There's rain. And, we're, and it's windy. And we have to you know, paddle all the way back. And I'll, I'll like, go ahead and admit that I was like the world's worst paddler. So I don't know if I was helping at all. I was, I was probably like working against the canoe moving in the right direction. <laughs> <laughs> but we made it back and i remember um my parents all the parents and the all the the people standing where we're supposed to bring the canoe back and they're going we were worried about you <laughs> and we shout back we were worried about us too <laughs> <laughs> but we made it back and everything was fine yeah, um, you were you were motivated to get back at that point right oh hell yeah <laughs> I just didn't want to be con uh, rowing anymore. It was it was way too much work for me. Okay, so all right, so now we're we're geeking out a little bit. All right, so what did you do immediately after high school? Was it college? Did you join the military? Did you join a cult? Did you uh, backpack in Europe? <laughs> None of those things. <laughs> Such a broad idea. Um, so I went to college and gotcha. worked full time in undergrad. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I did too. All right, so you didn't have the party school um, sort of college experience, wasn't? Nope. Like Animal House. Okay. No. So what was, was the job like? What was full time job? What were you doing? I worked in the hospitality industry at a hotel. Oh, okay. 
All right. Know, they're open 24 hours a day, right? So it makes it easy to schedule around ah, school. Ah, right, right, right. So you could sort of like go to class during the day and then work at night and then never sleep kind of idea. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> sleep in class or sleep at work, whichever one works for the day. <laughs> wow. Okay. Good for you. So what did you end up studying? What was your major? Finance. Oh, lovely. Ah. Yeah. So I knew I was going to do, I knew where I was going. So I knew I was going to do finance and eventually become an advisor. Right. Um, okay. So that was something that, when did you find that out? It, it must have been pretty young because you were already doing it in college. That's pretty cool. That's fortunate yeah. for you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I would say that I, I'm lucky enough to have some mentors and people that I looked up to. Okay. Um, so it made it easy for me to kind of figure out what I thought I wanted to do. Granted, I didn't have like full clarity, but I knew general direction. Right. Um, and that was the finance area. Gotcha. Yep. So what is a finance degree look like? Is it a lot of math or not? Like huge math? I have no I mean, <laughs> I guess I have an inclination for math. So okay. it didn't seem like it wasn't like mathematics where you're like. Right. Writing. It's not like engineering, trigonometry, yeah. calculus, not that kind of stuff. Right. Yeah. Okay. It's more like I would say like underwriting and just putting together models and different things like that. Interesting. To, you know, some data analysis, but nothing too like crazy in the math side. So like st statistics, that kind of stuff? Did you have to do statistics? I hated yeah, that class. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> the, the thing that I liked about that class, because I really hated it, but my statistics professor allowed us to use Excel, if that makes sense. So uh -huh. as long as we could make the formula in Excel and it was what the homework was, she was cool with it. Then we didn't actually have to do the calculations ourselves. She thought, you know, that's what you're going to do in the real world anyway. Why should I make you actually do all the functions by hand? I was like, oh, you're awesome. Because <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm would be actually finance. really good at Excel. Yeah, I'm really good at Excel. Yeah. Yeah. So I, is there a story like, so like I know when I was a kid in high school, like I knew nothing about finance or anything like money related or math or numbers or spreadsheets or nothing. But um, I was a computer geek and I think it was my senior year in high school, I was doing the computer business cluster. So we're learning all about computers for business. And this is in the 80s. So it was kind of like, wow, how'd that happen, right? Um, and this was my second year in this program, you know? And the teacher was like, okay, you guys are seniors now. So uh, you're going to choose your own curriculum. And he had a bunch of computer software books that are like dictionaries. You know, they look really huge. And you, we all picked one. And that was sort of like our project for the whole year. And we had to be become the whatever insert program here guru for the class. Oh, wow. I picked Lotus 1, 2, 3. And that was the precursor of Excel. Okay. So okay. it was all DOS, you know, before GUIs in the 80s. Um, but, you know, I, I learned how to, you know, make a, make a spreadsheet what a formula is, you know, equals some colon, right? All that mm -hmm. stuff, all that stuff, right? Yep. I, I was doing that in high school. So, you know, I didn't even know why. <laughs> I'm just stacking up these columns of numbers and then you can do shit with them. I'm like, oh, okay, I can see how they <laughs> <laughs> Okay, you know, and then I ended up making like this, uh, this spreadsheet to calculate grades, uh, and they used it. I was like, holy crap. <laughs> wow. It's actually useful. Yeah, I know. Actual, no kidding, practical applications of high school work. That was fun. Okay. So, all right. So you're in college, you're going, you're working full time. That's got to burn you out. What was your first job after graduating college? So I got a job at a broker dealer, which is like the back office of broker dealer. Yeah. Back office of what? Like a, for a financial advisory firms. Oh, wow. So, yeah. I wanted to learn the operations and just kind of how it actually all worked to have a better understanding when I was on the other side. So what does that look like? Because I have no idea. Is that like, <clears throat> like the old days? Is this like the brokerage house kind of idea? 
not like it's portrayed in movies where you just have a bunch of like traders on a floor yelling at each other. <laughs> right. Like, that's what you think. And that's what I – is it like yeah. Wolf of Wall Street? <laughs> it's not like that at all. Okay. It's more of like the, the compliance side of it that you don't even see in the movie because – they put the compliance in some other building way away from everybody. Oh, right. Okay. Um, so it's a lot of just, you know, making sure everything is actually taken care of, that the trades can go through, that yeah. everything is legal and everything is appointed for correctly. Wow. That's a lot of work. I actually um, had a gig in, what was it? It was called DBS Bank in Los Angeles. That's okay. like the sort of like the government bank of Singapore. And they had a lawyer doing compliance. And he had to use, I can't remember what it was. I think it was like one of those cloud-based, I want to say Oracle, right? This customized compliance application that they paid somebody to make. And mm -hmm. he would run these things. And then it would say, oops, this, this, this set of transactions you need to look at kind of idea. Is that sort of what you were doing? Um, not at that point, <laughs> okay. but I worked with like the team of people that supported that person. Ah, so doing the grunt work. E exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Wow. And what, what? Right. right so more of like the mailroom kind of guy, you know? Oh, right, 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 right. Sort of like getting all those. Yeah. And this was probably before they had like these really sophisticated business intelligence models that you can just run that are built for you know, I, we need to comply with all this crap. Build us something, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's what they do now, right? So, you know, all right. I can, I can imagine you're doing a lot of... What, what sort of things were filled your day in this job? Um, a lot of paperwork for advisors. Just okay. kind of like okay. they call and say, hey, I need this done or I don't know how to do that. So then I'd have to go figure it out and make sure that oh, but that's awesome. everything was like appropriate right? and get everything prepared for them and then send it back to them. Wow. Things like that. Okay. But that means you're honing that very awesome skill called figure shit out. Exactly. Which is... And, and figuring it out in an area that I care about, I'm going to work in as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 But you know, not everybody has that. I mean, a lot of people like, you know, that's sort of like... Before there was Google, right, I was sort of like Google for a lot of people. Like if you would make like a checklist when I was in the Air Force, right, mm -hmm. they would say like, step A, ask Jeff. Because <laughs> <laughs> he can figure shit out. <laughs> right. My He'll wife take did. responsibility and do it. So it, just it, ask him. Yeah. Well, I, no, you know, it's, it's more like, it's not my job to know this. All right. So. Like somebody that has absolutely no clue what to do with X, right? Mm -hmm. I would say, okay, who on the base does X? Oh, oh, that's that's Sergeant Smith. Oh, okay. Well, let's call Sergeant Smith. Hey, Sergeant Smith, how's it going? Hey, <clears throat> good. What's up? Hey, uh, I'm talking to this other person. It's Sergeant uh, Cladoris, and uh, he doesn't know how to do X. Oh, I can tell her how to do X. All right, I'll give you a call. All right, that's it. <laughs> that's, that's figure shit out. <laughs> okay, so let's do one of these stories before we forget. Uh, so let's talk about the the Cayman Island trip story. Yeah, so I guess I'll, I'll run to like that trip because it'll make more sense for the listeners. Yeah, sure, of course. Um, so after I worked at the broker dealer, right. went to grad school, finance. Wow. Um, and then became a financial advisor. Okay. And at that point, you know, had some early success with that and became um, an OSJ and a branch manager. What's which an means, OSJ? Uh, basically, <laughs> the, the, that compliance guy that says, oh, I have to do these certain things because these transactions don't make sense. Okay. Gotcha. Um, that was now me. Wow. Okay. So now wow. you're the man. You're not the, the grunt anymore. Okay. Correct. Understood. So but you're the, the guy signing the letter that says we are now in compliance, sir. Stamp. Yeah, for our for our branch. For yeah, our was that guy. Branch. Right. Yep. So that's a lot of responsibility. Yes, it was. And <laughs> okay. uh, being the youngest guy in the office, right? And the guy that has to tell everybody what they can and can't do was an interesting dynamic. Yes. I'll admit. Bosses don't uh, like hearing th when they can't do things. No, especially from somebody that's like half their age. Right. right? 
Right. So I can see but, where there, that might cause some conflict. Okay. Yeah. And okay. at that point, I wasn't like a very balanced and centered person. Okay. So I would just tell people like, no, you can't do that. And it wasn't very diplomatic. <laughs> I, I, I can I can I can share this. I did the same thing. Yeah. I used to think that was okay. Yeah, me too. <laughs> For a long time. Until the Cayman trip. So, oh, okay. Tell us about that, the Cayman Island it, trip. We go full circle here. Yes. Um so I was one of those people again, like, right, we just work all the time, vroom vroom. Right. Get it done. And was just on a vacation, went to the Cayman Islands for a week and had planned most of the days. Right. Um Right, like, oh, you have to see this, do this. But there was one day where we had you're nothing sailing, to do. You're you're diving. You're having a good time. Yeah, came in. Right, it's awesome. Right, stingrays, bioluminous bays. Ooh. I'd recommend all of those for if anybody's going. Yes. Um. But yeah, so there was one day we had nothing to do. That's and I remember we, okay. We were just sitting on the patio, listening to the waves crash, and like it was a very relaxing day. Plus, you're in the Cayman Islands, like there's not really that much to do. Right. Um. And so as the waves kind of washed in and washed out, it kind of like lulled me into like a hypnotic state, if you will. Okay. And I've heard this before, this ocean feel kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. And so one of them, it is. And so one of those waves, like it felt to me like it washed away kind of all my limiting beliefs, all of my, um, just kind of like the ego and everything that I felt like I just had to control people and control every aspect of everything that was going on and left wow. me sitting there very open, very free, very abundant, just full of potential. Okay. And it was obviously a very impactful experience for me. Um, I call it my epiphany moment. Yeah. And wow. Okay. It was, yeah, where I, it's when I veered. Interesting. Yeah. That's, <clears throat> I've heard this before. So the ocean having sort of like this trippy kind of <laughs> right epiphany moment, that's, yep. that's actually common. I remember, yeah. so I never had that necessarily aha epiphany personally. So mine came to me by way of this college professor invited me to get some energy work at his house. <laughs> which was trippy, right? Yep. It's because I was like 20 years old and I didn't even know what energy work was, right? So after he did the energy work on me and then we went and had some food or something or whatever we were doing next, he told me this story about this guy very much like what you just described, just doing nothing, sitting mm -hmm. on the beach, listening to the waves crash. And suddenly this voice in his head says, we're not here to know, we're not here to compare, and we're not here to judge. And then they, th that was it. And wow. I, <laughs> right? <laughs> and, I, and, and I totally rejected that in my 20-year-old self. I was like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I go about being an idiot. But the kernel was there, right? Mm -hmm. And it felt... Like something was there, I just had no way to access it. So, what 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 did after this thing? Did you completely change overnight? No. See, okay, good. Yeah, yeah, no, no, <laughs> Neither I did mean, I. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't have a story to share with people and like a process to show them how to like go right. to the next phase if I just was like, oh yeah, just sit on a beach and you'll wake up the next day like perfect. Right. That's not <laughs> how it works. Yeah. <laughs> but you do have these moments. Yeah, I think the, the the moments are like huge, right? Because it it's sort of like this thing you want to um, once you sort of like have that feeling. So so I my thing was was mine was a story related to me. I didn't really feel that, right? So mm -hmm. later on, when I started meditating, then I I had my own experiences where I was having you know like lots of those epiphanies. And those experiences I would keep going back to, right? That yeah. it's more like a, a knowing or a feeling. So yep. anyway, so talk a little bit about like the after the the epiphany. What was the journey like? 
Yeah. So obviously vacation ended. Right. Came back home and like it was back to normal life. Yes. Um, and it so I guess I'm lucky in that I had the experience as an individual, right? So when you have the experience, you're like, okay, I know I can do it again and experience it again, uh, but I don't know how. Okay. Right. So that started me on my journey of personal development and spiritual growth. Sort of like opened out. your curiosity. Exactly. Kind of like, a, okay, that was interesting, new, awesome. I want more of that. How do I do that? Is exactly. That, okay. Like, how do I live right. as how much do I, as possible I, in that how do state? How I go back there? <laughs> yep. How do I, how did I get there? How do I go back? Right. Okay. But, and, but live in the real world too. Like not retreat to some beach and right. you know, just live on yes. the beach and fish for a living. Not escape. Um, you don't want to yeah. escape. It's not right. One of my one of my uh, uh, spiritual underpinnings was the no escape score story. I think I, I one of, yeah. There's no escape. <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> so you can rest and you can retreat and you can re-energize, but you're not escaping. Yep. You you're here for a purpose. You're here to do your secret mission from God. That's what I keep telling myself. <laughs> <laughs> and I like it's, it. It's very Blues Brothers, right? The, yeah. the only thing different about me and the Blues Brothers is they just wanted to get the band back together, right? <laughs> and I don't really, I, I think my new answer to the question of what is your secret mission from the God, I would say, I don't know, because it's a secret and God's good at keeping secrets. Um, but as far as I can tell, it's being me and being happy, curious, and grateful. But anyway, Ooh, I digress. I, like <laughs> I was going to say, you could tell everybody to put the band back together. You just don't know what the band is yet. <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> maybe you're maybe you're in the band and i just don't know it yet could, right could be i just don't know the players yet but it's gonna be great yes yes so okay so you get back and you want to find the thing you want to get yep. back to the beach in your head so yep. what what is it that you do to do that a lot of trial and error so i spent years in a a lot of money doing everything from right meditation right. to just reading spiritual books, right. sales trainings, um, marketing trainings. I mean, interesting. Everything. Okay. I was like, yeah, give me as much information as I can, and like I'll figure right, out right. The pieces that work. Right. Um, and what did that look like to you? Was it sort of like running down a dream, or was it very methodical? Um, I would say that I was just following the path laid out in front of me. Gotcha. Yep. So one thing would like lead <laughs> yeah, right yeah. to the next and right, then that right. would take you somewhere and it just all kind of built and it was a very curvy road to get where I, <laughs> where sure. I ended up. For sure. But, There's uh, a lot of like dead ends on that path and then you have to turn around and go, oh, that wasn't it. <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I like, I, I mean, I say that I learned at least one valuable thing in everything that I did. Sure. So I made the best of it, right? Like it wasn't yeah. like, and there was no like escape or retreat. It was like, okay, that was good. It just wasn't the right thing for what I'm trying to do now. Right. And let's keep going. Yes. So eventually, so just tick off a couple of uh, your favorite spiritually related books that you oh. dove into. You don't have to go deep. But like, what's your favorite if you had to pick one? That's a tough question because I read it them is. all. <laughs> you read them all. Okay, I'll, I'll lick, tick off um, some and then maybe if... But I was going to say, go gonna say like the... Um, oh my God. I can see the titles in my head. Um, Autobiography of a Yogi. I thought was really wow. good. Wow. Oh, I don't know that one. Um, I'm going to have to write that down. Autobiography of a Yogi. Yeah. What else? Did you ever do any uh, uh, Deepak Chopra, Wayne Dyer? Uh, let's see here. I'm going. So I'm actually a, a Chopra certified meditation instructor. Wow, that's awesome! Yeah, you're yeah. really close to where his his outfit used to be. Yep, that's awesome. And so I, he was one of the people that I started following early on. Yeah, me too. Um, there's things that I like about him. There's things that I don't. I but... actually hung out with David G. You know who David G. is? He was one of his meditation teachers. Anyway. I digress. Uh, <laughs> it's a strange story. But anyway, yes, Chopra's awesome. Yep. Uh, um, how about like any of the uh, Eckhart Tolle? Yep. Yeah? Yeah. I really liked Power of Now and New Earth. 
Yeah. They were really good. That right whole, now. Yeah, that whole thing about like, how can I be two people? That was like, that, it really set me off. Um, that Anyway, so yeah. So, okay. So you dive in, you, yeah. you do Awaken all Awaken the, the Buddha Within. That's another one that Awaken was good. Awaken the Buddha Within. Okay. I like that one. Did you ever get to Course in Miracles? Did you like that at all? No. Okay. So every book that I read referenced it. So I felt like I re- read it just by reading everybody else's interpretation. <laughs> That's why I bought it because everybody else was, was referencing it all the time. Yeah. It's actually a good read. It, okay. It, yeah. Um, it is. It's a lot of work because it's really like um, the, the, the writing method is weird. So once you kind of like just commit <laughs> yep. to at least reading the text, it was fun. It was fun. You know, I liked it. Yeah. God. The only other one I'd add is like the four agreements and that was all of those. Good. But yeah. yeah. I don't think Which I ever. Series. Yeah. Oh, really? Okay. Four agreements. Nice. Okay. So then you probably are developing some sort of mindfulness practice as you're going, right? So what does that mindfulness practice look like now? I know you're selling it. <laughs> yeah. Well. <laughs> but you can get into the gist. Yeah. So. I have like a daily practice and then I have like what I call like my annual retreat. Oh, nice. Um, so on the daily basis, and this is what I teach in the course as well, is my like journaling technique. Oh, nice. So okay. wake up every day, meditate, and then I review my goals for kind of the year and my like big dream goals. Okay. Um, write the things that I'm grateful for, write the things that I want to achieve in a day, and then I actually kind of script out my day if you will okay and visualize the perfect day oh nice every morning wow. um and then i do the most important thing that needs to get done right away. immediately after that right good and then and then the day starts where you know i turn on my phone and check emails <laughs> good for you no that sounds awesome so um when you're doing your meditation what 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 is it? Can you give us a little bit of the nuts and bolts? Like, is it more like the breath work or is it more like just like uh, you do the same thing every day? Do you use like an audio that goes with it or is it just breathing and counting? What are you doing? So what I do and what I teach is basically a mantra meditation. Oh, mantra meditation. Yeah. Okay. So you just repeat something silently in your head. Right. Those um, work really well. Yeah. Does it so matter for, what the mantra is to your practice or is it more like a so hum sort of idea? Um, so we teach the so hum for people that just kind of want to learn. Right. Um, but then there are individual mantras based on, not to get like woo woo, but too like deep. based on the sound of the universe was sure. making when you were created. Oh, um, wow. So, so it's like taking you home, if you will. Oh, nice. Um, so I we like allow that people idea. to. That's, you know, even, even if it's full, uh, malarkey, it's fun. <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, I've never heard that one before. Yeah. So I that's know. what I do. Okay. All right. So it's almost like a personalized mantra. Yep. And that's for And you. it has no meaning. So you can't uh, like attach any thoughts or feelings to it. Right. Okay. It's just meaningless and you just relax into it and it really helps. And yeah. you can do it anywhere. Right, right. My favorite one that I'm doing now that I like, I heard on Tim Ferriss, is where it's like you're counting to 10 and then start over. That's that's a push-up. And as long as you get through all the way to 10, so if you if your mind wanders anywhere between 1 and 10, you have to start over at 1 again. That adds, actually adds really good motivation for me because, you know, we all have that brain. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that doesn't want to stay at it. And I, I know I was pra- uh, meditating wrong for so many years. I'm trying to pull the monkey brain. Uh, uh, somebody taught me. It was just like, don't worry about what happens in your brain. I ran with that. <laughs> 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 I just was like, okay. And I would just sit there for 20 minutes and daydream. That's kind of oh. good, right? But it's not really meditating. <laughs> Not meditation at it's all. It's not it's meditation just, at all. It's no. kind of just daydreaming. You're just sitting there daydreaming, which is fun. I mean, yeah. you know, you're 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 not looking at the world. Your eyes are closed. I was falling asleep a lot. Not meditation, right? So I was like, oh, okay, now I think I get this. So that, yeah. Anyway, I mean, even if you do that, even if you're trying and you're screwing up, I'm okay with that. 
do that for 10 years. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> At least you're motivated to try it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And they, and they say there's no, you know, good or bad meditation. We don't judge our meditations. Right. But so. you're not doing it. <laughs> yeah. I would say that's not doing it because what you're trying to do is actually focus your mind a little bit, not to it's focus lightly. Right. Right. Anyway. Like you have to worry about it a smidge, enough to get between one and ten. <laughs> anyway, okay. So before we get too far, uh, any any more on the Cayman Island trip, or, or is that wrapped up? Yeah, I think that we've been talking so like all around it that I'm like, I think that's everything. That sounds good. <laughs> okay, so let's do the oops, I'm rock climbing story. Oh, we're just jumping right in. Um, Yes. Well, if you need, if there, if, if it needs lead up, that's okay. No, uh, no, it doesn't need lead up, but it is interesting. So, cause it just happened recently and oh, nice. I got, I just got back from a, I would call it a bucket list trip. And so nice. Um, for my birthday, I went out and stayed at Amangiri, which is a resort in Southern Utah. Wow. And it's on 600 acres. So kind of out in the middle of nowhere. Right. And I, and I signed up for all their experiences, right? And one of them was called the Via Ferretti. And they, they kind of in the brochure, are like, oh, yeah, it's a nice little hike. It's going to be great, you know? Okay. So I walk up, you know, in the morning to go on my hike. And I got my hiking shoes on. They're really just like walking shoes. Right. Um, so I'm like, eh, how crazy could hike. this be? Yeah. Right. And the guy looks at me and goes... Um, why are you wearing those shoes? I'm like, we're hiking on a hike. Yeah. He's like, I'll be right back. I'm like, what size do you wear? Right. So I give him my shoe size. He comes back. He's like, here, you need these. These will stick to the rocks better. And I'm like, stick to the rocks. What are you talking about? You know? Oops. And so <laughs> <laughs> he like, I put them on because I'm like, he clearly knows better. He does this every day. Sure. And, you know, we go out for like a, I'd say probably like a 10 minute hike and we get to the bottom of a, like mountain basically just a rock sheer wall and he's like Yikes. hey we're gonna climb to the top of that and oh I'm wow like, what like they, they tell us this is a hike he's like yeah i'm really talking to the front desk and the you know events because they shouldn't say it's a hike you're rock climbing and i was like oh i was like i knew i was gonna kind of push some fear of heights on this hike because it's like a there is a suspension bridge that you walk across so okay. in my head you just like hike to the bridge you walk across this bridge that's you know four or five hundred feet in the air yeah and you're done right i didn't know i was actually climbing the mountain to get to it wow and okay. so yeah it was a, it was an interesting experience um were there ropes involved yes yikes <laughs> was Hold it on. was it you need was it clip fun? in clip out yikes oh my goodness did you um, did you enjoy it or were you just too panicked and I enjoyed when I was done. <laughs> so I remember standing at the bottom. So we went up the beginner that they take everybody up. Right. He's like, oh, you're really good. Let's go down this other one. And I was like, okay. You know, we get to the bottom of that one after we do the bridge. And I'm standing at the bottom of it looking up. I'm like, I can't believe I just came down that hill. Like, that's intense. Yeah. And he's like, oh, yeah, that's called vertigo. And I'm like, yeah, glad you didn't tell me that before we started. <laughs> Have you ever watched this thing called Running Wild with Bear Grylls? I think that's no. his name. So he does something like that with like a celebrity. And they'll helicopter out to the middle of nowhere and then go on a survival overnight stay. And somewhere like on the second day, they have to do something that, they, that the celebrity thinks is going to kill them. Right. It's yep. not going to kill them. Right. It's kind of like your rock climbing thing. You're you're probably pretty safe, but it's going to make you feel like you're going to die. <laughs> yeah, exactly. As soon as you get off of that rock, I mean, everything in your brain is telling you, yay, we didn't die. And that's that that I didn't die euphoria that everybody is looking at, looking exactly. for. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so congratulations on not dying. Thank um, you. I was very proud of myself as well. Yes. And, and, and uh, I, I did something similar to that. So I went on one of these, uh, damn, 
my wife went to Japan by herself, and I stayed home for some reason. I don't know why, because I usually go with her. Um, and I was like, oh, well, there's this whole long weekend that I'm, I don't want to be home doing nothing. So I booked this thing. It was like a retreat out in the middle of the desert. Um, it was kind of like by Palm Springs, but like you get to Palm Springs on the 15 or whatever that is, the 10. Yep. Um, yeah, the 10, I guess. And then you sort of like turn away from the ocean and drive another hour on gravel road. So like Joshua Tree area or something? I don't remember. Eh, it's cool. But it, it was like this meditation yoga retreat. It was like called like a love fest or love something. I can't remember what it was, but we were doing bhakti. Have you ever heard of this bhakti thing? It's no. like where you sort of like uh, sit around and sing. Um songs in another language like Hindi or Indian or something like that. Um okay. I was, knew nothing about any of it. <laughs> but I thought it was cool. <laughs> so I brought my tent and I pitched it and uh it was fun. Um but like day one, right, we um they go, Hey, we're gonna go blah 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 and 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 we're gonna hike. So I did that. And much like you, we get to this sort of like rocky thing. And we're not climbing up, but we're climbing sort of like through, if you know what I mean. Uh-huh. Where you're like these tight rocks next to each other where you can kind of shimmy through and then drop and then do that over and over again made me really uncomfortable and I was tearing up my hands and wish I had gloves. And, and then I was like, wow, I really don't want to be doing this. <laughs> <laughs> And then it was over, and I was like, oh, I didn't die. Yay. <laughs> you get stuck in the rocks. I don't know. You know, it was just something that, you know, is like if I was had known more, I probably would have said no, you know. No, yep. I don't uh, want to do that. <laughs> I feel the same way about the rock climbing. I was like, I'd have said no if they told me what I was doing. Right. <laughs> right. So in a in a weird way, glad I didn't know because I would have wimped out. <laughs> <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> okay, so we are getting close to 10 o'clock here, so we, we, we're getting close to wrapping up. But let's talk a little bit about what financial freedom looks like to you. So, like, I know everybody's got a different idea of what that looks like. So what does financial freedom mean and look like to you? Yeah, so, I mean, I, that's one of those things that I kind of learned early on in my career that everybody has a different definition. Totally. Um, yes. especially like when it comes to success and the amount of money you need. Right. Um, so for me, it's this combination of being able to live the life that I desire. Right. Um, have the freedom to do the things that I want to do while still being able to give back to the causes and charities that are important to me. Okay. And if I can do all those things, you know, I, I'm, I'm good. Right. Right. Yeah, you know, I think people, like, if you get stuck in this whole, it's almost like an old school retirement mindset. Yeah. I tried to retire, and it's really not fun. It's, you can't just do nothing, right? Yep. I would say burgers and beer is really boring. You know, it's like, woo, I'm just getting fat. <laughs> 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 I did that. I got fat. It wasn't fun. <laughs> So there, you have to find things to do that inspire your curiosity. For me, I have yeah. to find something that opens up curiosity and helps me feel grateful. And also, like, I'm working on something that right. helps the world, right? Somehow. Some small yeah. way, right? Right. You got to be progressing somehow. Keep growing. Definitely keep... Obviously, you have to keep growing or you're dying, right? And we're all dying yeah. anyway, but maybe not. <laughs> The more I read about like uh, the future, um, it's going to be completely different. I, I don't know. I, I'm going to just throw this out there because it's been blowing my mind. So have you ever heard of this lady called Jane McGonigal? She's like a game, game designer and futurist. So she okay. just wrote a new book called Imaginable. So and I bet I, I've already listened to the uh audiobook from the library like once and I'm on my second one second run through it's just amazing so what she's doing is like simulating the future in her head so it's like she's 
taking futurists and game design and merging them together. So you sit there and think about things that could go horribly wrong in the future and how you would react to it. And it's amazing. <laughs> wow. She calls it urgent optimism. So I'm, that's definitely a thing I'm going to get into. So everybody out there, go check out uh, Jane McGonigal and uh, Imaginable um, because it's awesome. Anyway, <laughs> there's my <laughs> plug about what I'm doing today. Um, right. So let's see. I think we can wrap up now. So you are uh, Ken Cladoris. You're at kencladoris.com. Talk a little bit about how people can best get in touch with you, reach out and touch you, whatever. Yeah. So kencladoris.com is kind of the hub for everything that I do uh, for people that are looking to get information and some free resources on finding their stillness and creating more success. Right. They can go to stillness to success.com. We have free downloads there. Um, and then obviously Facebook and Instagram uh, for if you want behind the scenes and daily motivation. Awesome. So those are the best ways to get a, get in hold of me. Facebook and Instagram. So everybody's uh, not on Twitter anymore. Do I need to get off Twitter? Is it? Is that, is <laughs> I was never on Twitter. Good for you. So. Good for you. So which one do you like better, Instagram or Facebook? Instagram. Instagram. Okay. Yeah. So if I if I'm getting off Twitter, maybe I'll go to Instagram. Maybe why not? You know, I agree. Got I'll see you on there. <laughs> <laughs> you got to go where the kids are. You know exactly. <laughs> All right, brother. This has been a blast. Thank you so much for hanging out with me for about an hour. Yeah, thanks, Jeff. I really appreciated the conversation. Enjoyed the show. All right, talk to you later. Have a good one. You too. Thanks for taking the time to ride along with us on another episode of Vroom Vroom Veer. For podcast info and show notes, be sure to head over to vvveer.com. That's triple V-double-E-R.com. Man, that's fun to say. And we'll catch up with you next time here on Vroom Vroom Veer. Vroom Vroom Veer.